What's up, everybody, and welcome back. If you're here, hello, my name is Elias. I'm an amateur landscape photographer from based on the Pacific Northwest. And this channel usually caters towards me going on location and bringing my experience as a new landscape photographer to YouTube. So if that kind of content interests you, hit the subscribe button. I put a video up every single week, or I do videos like this, which is post-processing, because I'm still waiting for my data to get back from my hard drive. And one of my favorite things to do in photography is a time lapse, a photo time lapse, not a time lapse like a movie like you do on your phone where you can speed it up and slow it down. I like doing photo time lapses because it gives you such control to be able to edit whatever you're trying to showcase. It gives it a really cool look when you're done. And so I wanted to make a video for beginners showing how to do a time lapse from start to finish and how to actually post process that time lapse in a video editor. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I have a time lapse I took the other morning. I live in Portland, Oregon, and this was a Awesome, amazing sunrise over Portland, Oregon, and I had fog rolling in as the sun was coming up. Very special moment. It's going to be an episode later in the channel, so subscribe if you want to see it. But fog is one of the coolest things to do a time lapse of because there's a lot of movement. That's the kind of the reason we do a time lapse is to show time moving in some manner, whether that's light, whether that's something moving to interact with, and that's what we're doing here, and it's fog. And in this instance, it's really cool because we have two factors. We have the fog that's rolling in, and we have the light that's gonna end up hitting the fog later in the time lapse. So I have about 301 photos here. Um, I, 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 I feel like it's worth mentioning when you do a time lapse, you need to figure out what your frames per second is going to be in your post-processing when you put it into a video editor. I wanted this to be a 30 frames per second, so I took 300 photos to make a 10 second clip. 30 times 10 is 300. I took a 301 time lapse, so about 10 seconds of footage. Now we have all the photos open up here in Lightroom Classic, that is what I prefer using. The first thing we need to do is edit the time lapse. We have to edit the photo, all of these photos. Now in this instance, it's a little tricky because there's light being played in this factor. If you did your time lapse in a situation where it gets lighter to darker, darker to lighter, there's a lot of ways you can do to make it fluent in as in the light transition from another, but what I like to do to make things simple, especially if you're just starting out in a time lapse, is to find the middle ground between the lightest and darkest photo. So literally, you go to the beginning, right here, that's the exposure. I didn't mess the settings at all, I just let it go this entire time. And the last photo, you can see it's much brighter. Highlights are a lot lighter. A lot, of, a lot of lights in this. So I kind of just scroll through and see where it starts to actually get lighter, where that sun first starts to hit. And it looks like it's almost almost halfway through pretty much, which is kind of interesting because I just, I didn't plan that, but let's just do that. Let's just do halfway. Darkest photo being all the way at the beginning, lightest photo being all the way at the end. So we're gonna go ahead and make our minor adjustments. I'm not gonna go over how I adjust this, but we're just gonna fly through it real quick. But I will say the thing that you want to remember is when you adjust this photo, you need to realize that what you're going to be doing is going to be what's on the darkest photo and the lightest photo. So we'll go ahead and edit this real quick, keeping that in mind. Okay, so we just finished editing the photo, and this is kind of what I got going on here. Now again, I just did this kind of quick, just kind of quick and simple for the video, but this is what I got going on for the edited, non-edited, edited, non-edited. And the thing you gotta remember is that this is a moving time lapse, so the fog will move, and everything in the fog, I have two, well technically I have three masks on here, but I have two main ones, one controlling the sky and one controlling the fog area. And I didn't do anything drastic as far as like luminance scales or anything, I'm just kind of doing a basic area because the fog kind of just stays in one area in this photo. The sky also too, these clouds kind of separate the horizon. I did not use the AI sky mask because it was selecting some fog and then stuff up here and I just didn't want to deal with it. So two separate gradients to do those and then one down here just to kind of black this out a little bit more. So what you want to do next is after, so once you get your common ground, I call this the common ground photo, I go ahead and click it. I go ahead and give it some stars so I know which photo I edited because sometimes I just get lost in the abyss. But I click it, scroll all the way to the beginning, shift key on PC, click, and that will select all the ones from that photo down. Let's go ahead and go down here and hit synchronize. Synchronize is gonna sync all these photo settings together or whatever you want selected on here. We're gonna go ahead and check all because we want everything the exact same. Let's go ahead and hit synchronize, let it do its thing. What that did is literally sync every photo to be the exact same settings as the one that you synced it to. So our middle ground photo is right here. And if you 
look at any of these, they now have the exact same settings as our starter middle ground photo. Apologize, my computer's running kind of slow. I have my hard drive is maxed out on this thing for everything that I've been storing on my computer. Again, I'm waiting for my hard drive to come back and my new hard drive setup that hasn't come in the mail yet. So all these photos are now mimicked to that same one. So what I like to do is go to our middle ground photo, which is this one, click on it, go all the way to the beginning and see what that difference is because that's the dynamic range of what you're gonna get. And that's decent, I can live with that, it's not a big deal. But again, in my situation, the light is changing. So if I went, if I edited that middle ground photo and went to this first one, which is gonna be the darkest photo, and this was just super dark and I didn't like it, I'd have to go back to that middle ground photo, brighten it up a little bit, kind of find a common ground. Again, it's the common ground photo between the darkest and the lightest photo. But this one looks good, I can live with that. So let's go ahead and scroll to our common ground photo again, click it, and we'll do the exact same thing with all the photos on the right. Scroll to the very end. Shift T to select all. Let's go ahead and hit sync. Check all. Synchronize. Go ahead and hit replace. And now all photos should be uploaded with the same settings. So now that we have our photos and how we want to do it, go ahead and hit control A to select all. Hit any one of them. Right click. Go to export. Go ahead and choose where you're going to want it. I'm going to put it, what I like to do in these types of things is find the time lapse and the folder one. And what I go ahead and do is create a new folder inside that folder and call it edited. Select folder. Now I'm not going to go over export settings. I always recommend doing like the highest resolution you possibly can on your export settings so but what i will say for the time lapse to work is you're going to need to name the file extensions in a certain way right under export location you've got file naming let's go ahead and rename to and what you want to do is do custom name sequence the reason you do this is when you bring it into your video software which is actually where you're going to be putting it together as a movie and exporting it as a movie the way it reads and this goes for adobe and this goes for davinci the way it reads those file settings, if they're named in a sequence, it automatically puts it as a movie for you. You don't have to import each photo and then put them all in your timeline and then do it from there. It will automatically create a movie for you. I personally used DaVinci, I used Premiere for a very long time, but I switched over to DaVinci and it was the best decision of my life. But yeah, that's pretty much what you do. So let's go ahead and give it a custom name. I'm just gonna name this Sunrise Fog. And what it's going to do is name every single file that one, starting with number one. So the first, first file will be Sunrise Fog 1, next one will be Sunrise Fog 2, Sunrise Fog 3, and on and on and on. And again, what this does, it names all of your photos in a sequence, so when you bring it into your recording software, it automatically puts it as a movie. So once you're all done, go ahead and hit export. Now we gotta wait for it to export, which takes a long time. 301 files takes quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward now, because this is gonna take a bit. And that only took like 25 minutes. <laughs> so now we have exported the photos. So we'll go ahead and close out of Lightroom. Now again, I said I am a DaVinci Resolve user. If you are an Adobe Premiere Pro user, it's super simple to do it. It's pretty much the exact same way what I'm gonna show you. Open up DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna go ahead and open a new project. And right away before I do anything, I'm gonna put this project as a 30 frames per second because that's what I wanted this to be. I wanted to have a 30 frames per second, 10 second time lapse. Now you can put it in 4K if you want, I'm just gonna leave it in HD, go ahead and hit save. Let's go over here to the folder file. So if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, you would just find the files you wanna import and bring them on in. But DaVinci is really cool because I can just physically go to the file Control A and bring it into DaVinci. And it literally puts it as a movie. It doesn't put it in separate folders and that is because everything is named. Now remember what I said about the file extensions being named, Sunrise Fog 1, Sunrise Fog 2, Sunrise Fog 3, 4, 5, and so on and so on. Sequence naming is the most important part when exporting the photos. All right, so close that down, go to my editing tab, drag it onto the timeline, and there we have it, the entire 10 second time lapse in real time. And right there's where the sun hits. Look at that dynamic range, isn't that so sick? Oh, I love it. Make that a little bit bigger. Now this is what I mean about the two ends of the spectrum. I started editing right around here in the middle because of the dynamic range of this. Obviously the end is super bright, the end is a lot darker, found the middle ground, 
which is right about there. And it was good enough to show that dynamic range between the darkest and lightest photo in the time lapse. Now, just because you come over here and this is a little bit darker, like that, that would have been fine. If I came over here and this was a little darker as well, I would that would have been fine. This is also a quick way of doing it, but I'm honestly pretty okay with this time lapse. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all up to the photographer's preference and what you're trying to show the viewer. I like this because the sun really popped out and captioned just everything lit up. So that's exactly what this time lapse is showing is everything lighting up as soon as that sun came out. And what's cool about this is Adobe does this too, is it's putting the photos into a movie format just like this. If you're making a time lapse and you don't have either, I would highly recommend getting DaVinci because they have a free version and you're 100% able to do this inside the free version. Super simple. Let's go ahead and export it. We'll just name it Sunrise Time Lapse. I like to save everything in the same area. Again, I'm working off my computer and it is just maxed out right now in hard drive support. So, and I put it in here in the time lapse and I'll go ahead and just stick it in there. Save. Not going to go over settings with everything, maybe in a different video, but I just like to do that. And let's go ahead and add render queue, render all. And just like that, our time lapse is done. And there she blows. and it looks really cool. I really like it. And that's it, that's your time-lapse. That's how to do a time-lapse from start to finish in Lightroom Classic and then in a video editor of your choice, mine is Dimitri Resolve. There is a lot more you can do in the post-processing part of this, but honestly, this is just cut and dry, super easy, how you do a time-lapse. One of my favorite things to do in photography, time-lapse that just, I don't think anything beats it. Putting something you're capturing in real time and speeding it up, there's something about that that looks so sick, especially when it's in photography and not just video format. So I really hope that helps, and I'm gonna end it here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any value out of this video, if this helped you out at all, if you're new to photography and you're looking, and you're just looking through YouTube and just found my, happen to find my video, please hit the like button, please do. It does help me out tremendously. I'm still very new to YouTube. And I appreciate every interaction possible. It does help my channel out, so please hit the like button. If you enjoy post-processing videos, like this, let me know in the comment section or hit the subscribe button. I do put a video out every single week. Now, normally it is about landscape photography out in the field, but I plan on doing more of this kind of stuff. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Help me get to a thousand subscribers in the year of 2023. It is my goal. If you have any questions about this video or anything you might've seen, go ahead and leave a comment below. I answer faster than anyone else on the internet. I guarantee that. Or if it's more in depth, go ahead and message me on Instagram. I always check my DMs all the time. And that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.